Mike. I'm the man on the mic. And I'm the guy on the bike. And this is a Valley 29 podcast. Good morning, Rich. Hi, Joe. Good morning. I feel like I really am the man on the bike. On the bike. <laughs> yeah, well, back in the saddle edition. Are we actually saying that? Or are we, you know, is this another false start? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We felt a bit like we were sort of... Um, the horse was going to bolt maybe too not, early. Maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's been a difficult month, but now in a in a really positive mood now. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we've got, we're good to go. Tell me more. Tell me more. Where are we at there? So I, I take it you've spoken to British Cycling and you've got a kind of directive as to where you're at. Tell me more. Uh, yeah, I think they were waiting for us to. Uh, it was like, who, who would go first? <laughs> ah, I'm joking, oh, really, but really, um, it was. You know, they, they always announce on a Thursday. And of course, there was the government update now. There's been two Thursdays since the government update about getting back to uh, easing the lockdown. We, we talked about that in the previous pod. And there, there was a firm date with, with with evolving wording of the 29th of March. Evolving so, wording? I think I've seen them live at Glastonbury, man. <laughs> yeah, <it's, it's, laughs> you, you can paint in that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, um, and so that that 29th of March, it general, generally said outdoor organised events are allowed. But then there was a lot of talk about limited travel, and then yes. it went on beyond that to say things like uh, there's, there's there's limits on numbers and, and all of those kind of things. So our interpretation was that you could run events from the 29th, run events like sport teams from the 29th of March. Yeah. But there was an absence of British Cycling's interpretation and, and work with. Um, clinical data management we weren't 100 percent sure about that um so we started to sort of prod the the channels and wood wood headquarters letters hello anybody yeah. there hello hello <laughs> there was, there was distant, responses. <laughs> <laughs> distant responses um right. it's difficult though isn't it because pretty cycling you know like you say it's a big organization and they've got to get it right they can't just say yeah go on you know go with what you think they have to actually get it right and release it so that it's right for everybody so and, and address all that. disciplines as well because exactly. it's not fair to say we've looked at racing <laughs> Um, We've worked out racing, but we haven't worked out mass participation. And exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I get all of that. Um, so we so waited. Where are we at then? Um, they announced yesterday, so off schedule. Well, well done. You know, early some urgency around that. Thank you, British Cycling. Um, and the, a big chunk of information, specifically about England, but the headline in there um, 20, from the 29th of March, as we'd interpreted, um, events such as sportives are allowed to happen. Um, right. A little bit of wording afterwards to say that... I was going to say there'll be some caveats, will there not? Only that they're not 100% sure about the restrictions. So the stuff that we had last year, 600 people, six riders in a minute, uh, outdoor feed stations, registration digitally, blah, blah, blah. Um, that isn't yet tidied up. So right, okay. Fa- fair enough. We're going to go with everything we did last year, which was yeah. over and above the British Cycling Guidelines. Um as we've heard and said loads of times, well received, work, worked really well. So we're going to go with all of that. Um, if there is additional um, restrictions that we need to insert, absolutely fine. We'll do that. Um, yeah. If not, we'll continue. We'll continue as we were with the same risk assessment, and, and it, it, it was safe, and everybody enjoyed it. So, so yeah, that's the plan. Um, we are back again. Wow, exciting stuff. So so what does that mean specifically for, for, for your events? Because we spoke at the last part about, well, this may, this may not, this may, this may not. But where are we specifically as we stand? Well, the, um, the, the events which were big events in March, uh, York Lead York, we'd already moved into April, yeah. communicated right. with everybody. That's all sorted out long since. After that would have been Tour of Lancashire. Um, so, of course, that has to move. We've moved that as well into April, and we've told everybody about that. After that would be the Cheshire Cat. And now we've wondered about what to do with the Cheshire Cat because it typically gets 1,500 people. Um, yes, it's a biggie. And, yeah, it's a biggie. I get to do that one. We get to see Joe there on the mic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's an event which is there's a bit of friction locally because there's so many people. Yeah. Um, Mau Cop, which we close, and that you know it's if a large group of people, even 
the limited 600 pitched up, we feel that maybe it would jeopardize the yeah. future of the event. It wouldn't be welcome in the area. Lots of people travel, um, hotels, yeah. mm, 29th, uh, mid-April, that kind of thing. So so what we decided to do with the cat was stick it into September. Um, right, okay. And I think that, uh, all right, there's loads of people doing that. Um, Great yeah, I, I'm hoping there's about 10 of me. I've learned cloning by then because yeah. uh, <laughs> because September's looking really interesting and there's only one of me. I'm working out whether, hey, here's an idea, Rich, remote commentating, all right? So I sit where I am right now and, and I tune in to the events via webcam or whatever. <laughs> right, hi, everybody. And the Cheshire Cat, well done. Have a really good ride. Oh, everybody, welcome to the event at the London Marathon. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a we'll get a cardboard version of you and um, yeah. stand it next to the medal table. Well, some would say it's just white noise anyway, Rich. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, and so we, can, anybody... we can turn you down then, can't we? <laughs> you can turn me down then or off completely if you need to. So yeah, I think I'm onto something here, mate. <laughs> Anyway, so, cool. so Cheshire Cat moved to September. I appreciate now we've moved the cat. This will be its fourth day, I think. Um, yes. But what, what we think is that it'll be, we should be completely out of the restrictions by then. Um, we won't be heading into anything sort of winter specific that it is a reality. You know, we, we, nobody wants to face or talk about that now, but it is a reality that come come next winter, there's going to be, restrictions, vaccinations happen yeah. to happen again, that kind of thing. So we don't want, you know, we think September is probably a sweet month as everybody else thinks. So it's going to be a busy one. Um, but yeah, we've, we've put the cat in September and hoping that it can be the big event that, that we in, have enjoyed. Um, and then that's it. They're, they're the only changes. So, so what it, what it actually means is that every big event that we do, that we planned for, for this year and have it's done happening. in previous it is going to happen yeah. yeah um which i which i think is is really brilliant um that that's the right result that is that sounds amazing and obviously all this is due to you know restrictions changing again and that kind of stuff but at the moment it it, it looks really positive you did say last time we spoke that you know there's always the month of august which normally nobody does anything because everybody's on holiday but is everybody going to be on holiday or you know uh, are there any thoughts of of of, of extras or or something but else there is and um, i typically we end with stockton at the end at the beginning of july and then we have the six weeks off not because yeah we want to go on holiday or anything, but just because the numbers are poor. And like you say, it's that might be different. Yeah, yeah. I think we're going to see how it pans out. Yeah. Um, everybody should have been vaccinated by then. Um, travel restrictions, we really don't know. So I think if people can go on holiday, they will. Um, yes, exactly. So Good we're going to we're going to watch how that pans out. But yeah, that is a good point. We, it we, could be the opposite. It could be that everybody goes away because they haven't had a holiday. So, yeah, it's a good point. The, so thinking about that. But then there's also the, the talk of the extension of the school term, which is going right. to impact everybody. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll find out there's a two week period in August where it's like it's like um, Italy or, some, or France where they have a national holiday and everybody's off. Um, imagine the price yeah. of your holiday then but it could it could be something like that so yeah. we're not gonna change, we're not gonna it? rush into that but yeah definitely really back positive, rich that. good news mate and um i've good noticed rich. you got the program t-shirt on where are we at is, is that kind of coming to an end am i right in saying that that's kind of almost finished it has yeah we're, we're in the the sort of the data gather oh, we've gathered data throughout but now we're in the analyzing phase so we're yeah we're getting the riders to do the second F FTP test. Um, and, uh, as Which Mark, they absolutely hate doing. We've been kind of said do 20 minutes, not the full hour. Um, right, okay. But yeah, this, it's, it's still a horrible, horrible thing to do. Um, yeah. But as Market Revolution says, you know, there's all kinds of elements to it, not just FTP. So we're, we're looking at that. But we're now at the stage of being able to do what we said we would do. And then that's make it a tangible measurement between you know, I did 12 hours, whereas previously I've done eight. The result of that is I wound my hours back. I did very focused training. I just went out and did what I want. All those kind of things are paging together. Got loads of sample data. It's really awesome. Um, and of course, there's going to be events not too far away, and they're comparable to previous year's events now. So when we do 
Manchester, Sheffield and, and, and somebody gets around an hour quicker than they did two years ago, we're able to compare the, we'll dig out the training information and be able to say, right, okay. Um, and, and what are your kind of <clears throat> initial thoughts, you know, having done the first programme, how are you feeling about it? How, how's it gone? I think that there's, well, there's definitely a, people have trained Benefited. more specifically yeah. because they are part of the programme. Yeah. Um, and that, that's, that's an aside we expected. Yeah. Um, but in that, we've seen people who've been ultra, ultra, ultra focused way beyond they ever have been before. And right. so things have gone wrong. Um, additional injuries, training outside in poor weather and had a crash. Um, right, so they've almost tried too hard. O- o- overdone it, um, overdone all, it. All, all, all of that kind of thing. So, and, and that that's real, that's useful feedback. Um, I was say, it's also part of the process, isn't it? Of, exactly. Of yeah. working out what you can and can't get away with. We've talked about We've talked about this before in a previous pod, haven't we? That all this is part of learning what your body can cope with. I mean, we talked about me and my lack of cycling, but, you know, in the last month, I've walked six miles a day every day. And the difference has been quite considerable. And I didn't realise that I could do that. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's that. And I think that that's where we'll go with the programme in, in next year um is the psychology of yes. um of training for a serious amateur um event yeah. right yeah because what you know people have had loads of feedback and especially as we've come out of it so where the guys have been working with mark and until the end of february and now they're now they're left to their own accord they're feeling a bit lost um that's interesting isn't it yeah and and so the psychology of having a, the, the big brother effect. I've got to train on a Tuesday for three hours. They've, they've because gone and, I'm being checked up on. Yeah. They've, they've gone and done it. And of course, on the last week in February versus the first week in March, your training program should probably be the same. So if you train for three hours on a Tuesday last week, training for three hours on a Tuesday next week, that but, but people aren't doing it. And so there's, that's really intriguing. So that's what we want to do next year. We'll do it again. Um, but we'll focus on the psychology rather than the physical aspects of it. It's interesting, isn't it? Because that's when technology can come into its own as well, because I've found with a little app, just reminding me of what I'm doing and telling me what I've done, it has been enough. I've got just a pedometer and it's red, red, green or orange. Red means I've done under 5,000 steps. Orange means I've done over 5,000. And green means I've done over 10,000. And I've be- become obsessed with the green yeah. Yeah. to the point that I'm, I'm doing 10,000 steps plus every single day because I want to hit that green. And so those little those little incentives are all part of it, aren't they? Works for me. Uh, 100% yeah. Strava, training with power, yeah. racing on Zwift, all of those things are additional incentives to to do it aren't they um but it does also show that the extra human element of having somebody that a knows what they're doing and b understands what you know what you're doing can make a, a considerable difference as well does uh, yeah yeah it, it, it's been so i've learned loads um really yeah and I, what's your main points what would you say are the things that you've kind of really learned from it well, i i always thought People went away and prepared over the winter, um, but I, but and that is is true of a racing cyclist, and that's always been my sort because of because that's your mentality that, and that, that's your background. Yes. My background, my peers, the people I keep in touch with, all, all that kind of thing, and I assumed that it was the same in sportive riding, but to a lesser extent. Um, so whereas a a serious pro would be getting in ten thousand miles over the winter, uh, I thought well, a sportive rider will probably get in three. But, but absolutely, that's not the case. There are lots of people who put their bike away and maybe ride on Boxing Day if the sun's shining or something like that and then dig it out. And they only ride organised events. Organised events are everything to them. And they'll, That's they'll really do, interesting, isn't it? Yeah, li- little bits of training to be able to do the right. But where we, we've had York Lee Jock where a thousand people turn up and it's the first event of the year or the first big event of the year. And it's carnage because broken chains, people can't get around, lost injured all these kind of things and you're thinking strange surely they've been riding on that bike all winter but they haven't no um wow and and, you know that there are people out there who ride our events who were who were really well prepared and do all of that but i think there's there's a lot a a large percentage 
who who don't and organized events are everything so is that, that to do with the incentive is that the fact that you know with, when you're a pro rider that's what you're doing and you have that incentive because it's your job whereas a sportive rider it's an extra thing or it's a hobby or whatever uh, there's a big difference there isn't there I think it's an entirely different sport for those yeah. people. And it's, yes. it's like, it's like a day out. Um, so to have it in the diary, to have some commitment, to know what it's going to entail. And, 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 I, and I've always like done a bit like the McDonald's effect, you know, that anywhere in the world, you go to a McDonald's restaurant, you're going to get the same thing, like it or not. And, and we've always tried to do that. So, you know, that it'll start at half past seven, you'll get a free feed stops, you'll get a medal, you'll, you'll get a time or all of those things which, and, yeah. and i think that 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 plays into it as well um so they know that they are that's what the day out entails that's what There's they need security to do. in that yeah routine yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they can get around if they don't there'll be support and 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 i think that that's a part of it as well and so that going out and riding the same route in the hills with a, a local friend up by yourself isn't an element of the sport that appeals yeah. to that person also it's mega, mega insightful re- really great yeah, and that, fascinating it stuff, will influence it? our events definitely um and i can see now why the the winter series the winter sportive series that we did last year and couldn't do this year was so popular because again it keeps that routine without them having to do it themselves yes but, yeah, yeah. It's to- it totally does yeah oh, wow. good stuff well in, in a way that's all part of you putting on something new is discovering you know what what to do better next time have you got have you got those things in your mind have you got ways in which you can kind of improve it or well i, I think that that consistency of offering events is mm, is something part that we, of it yeah. yeah and maintain that that same thing i think we keep talking about the stuff that we we stuff that we added for covid safe but actually yeah. we, should, we, we, we are great works, things yeah. anyway so they know they can book a start time and set off with their friend and and they won't be crowded at, on, at the start line and on all of those kind of things i think really you know, tick the box of, of that and and we'll focus on that a little bit more um, we've we've been working with a later female rider as well um naomi holland so percentage of our our and the industry's percentage of female participation is is low um yeah. we're about 80 20 and that's probably at the best that the cat or something like that. We have other events where it's it's fine it's fine the female rider and and really scratch my head at why that is because female when I go on a ride locally because, yeah women cycling is huge loads, yeah loads yeah. yeah and and I went out it was a, a nice nice weekend up here and I went out twice and I would say fifty percent of the riders are female and not just but they're on their own or they're in twos and threes rather than do they want to actually ride in the big group and i think you know we did a lot when i was working with british cycling last couple of years doing the let's ride events on the breeze stuff and they were very much noticing that women actually prefer to ride in a in a smaller group i think with less people so it's maybe that attraction that the blokes have of this big event with loads of people maybe it's not the attraction the same way for women is that that's the, well that's the kind of thing we're trying to discover yeah. um yeah. and um yeah we're working with naomi she's somebody who's done one or two of our, of our events previously she's done the program um, but she's in a great position with her riding where she has some experience of events, but isn't a seasoned pro by any right. means. She's right. still on a progression through her fitness. She, she rides Pretty really good. well, but she's not, you know, we don't want to hear talk, from yeah. Yeah. Sarah's story about how hard it is to ride a bike. We want to hear from somebody who's, um, so she, she's perfect for that. And she's coming with some really great ideas and we, we, we we're working on you know we have we can book a start time just as an example everybody books a start time and we open at half seven till nine o'clock we're going to close off the men from a certain part of that so ladies who a women want, start period, yeah, yeah yeah so women women can enter any time that's really good if they want that's to ride a great call. just with females or do you want to yeah. start just with females there's a section in the middle where, where they can do that um that's really good mate i like that think things like that and um we're starting a, a buddy program we're calling it so facebook page where people who've never ridden an event can just post on there and say i've never ridden an event is there anybody who's going to this event that so I'm good pitching up? this is really good uh, yeah and, yeah it's just you know, we've, we've always tried to be inclusive and, and i think we always have been um but there's you know this seems like an area that we can really um Get 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 more people taking yeah. part in it, and, and so many 
men have turned up at a sportive having never done an organized event before and some years later we see them in, in a significant race yeah. and they've progressed through the sport and it's not all about getting there but that it'd be good to do that with the ladies as well and, and it's interesting what you're saying because it's not like you know we need to get women on their bikes you know that's already happening and like you say it's probably if the t- statistics were out there the the, the the biggest growing area of cycling but you know how do you then get them involved in these events or do you have to do something different because you know that's what yeah. they're looking for yeah. so yeah really good really interesting yeah. mate and, and just to end, I suppose, we're doing our um, virtual Alp de Zwift. So Thursday Flyers, we're calling it, just for a bit Thursday of fun. Flyers. Um, so they it. well know. We've done it on a Friday to make that work. But yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's Alp de Zwift, which we all know well, and the sub one hour challenge. So um, we've made an event on Zwift. A- anybody can join. They just need to follow me. And yeah. I will invite them to it. And, you know, success is turning up. There's no, yeah. how it works is if you get under the hour, we, uh, on behalf of Dream Bike, we make a donation of £10 to the daisy chain for yeah. every rider who gets under the hour. If you go over the hour, then you make a donation. And it can be a donation of anything you want. Um, I love that. I love that. It, it's just a bit because this charity is still not getting any support. We're not going to generate okay. thousands, but it's, it, we're, you know, it, it'll help um, and it's great fun. We're going to post, you'll watch me on Facebook and you'll see the other riders through Zwift on the Facebook feed as well. So yeah. if you want to get involved, if you want to donate and you're not taking part, then, then that's brilliant as well, get in touch. Um, but it's just something to do. Um, yeah. And it, if you did that once a week, actually, you know, if you if you ride up Altaways in less than an hour once a week, you will get fit. Um, yes. So cool. so it, it, it's got that Very element good. to it as well. Very good. Yeah. lovely mate well uh, that's our time um thank you so much again i'm really nice to be catching up and uh, it's nice so, isn't it and i think yeah and getting some good news as well and well, some yeah, sense we, that we might be able to move again i remember going through this with you in july and august last year and go there might be light at the end of the tunnel and then we did a couple of events in september and then it all went backwards again so you know, there's a little bit of trepidation i'm guessing but uh, it's good to see that things are Starting to move again. It really is. We, we talk about looking back at other pods, didn't we? And and this, uh, we've talked about all kinds of things today, but this will be one um, where that first five minutes of we are coming back, we've got dates, we've got clarity, we're going to see you guys on the road again, is right. a fundamental, in, in the story of the last year, it's a fundamental part. Um, yeah. It's, it's what we've waited for, so super excited. Good, good. Well, thanks, Rich. Thanks, everybody. Cheers, we'll, uh, Joe. Thanks, everyone. See you again soon. Cheers, guys. Bye for now.